Uh, the goal of this presentation is to explain a little bit about what we are doing right now at the Linux Media Subsystem. This is, uh, for me, one of the uh, host topics that uh, are happening right now. It is related with the way we handle cameras inside the, not only at the kernel side, but actually at the user space side. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit at, uh, during this talk about what it is uh, in a complex camera on our sense. Uh, I will be discussing a little bit about how we solved camera issues we had in the past using the lib video for Linux. And uh, uh, we'll then talk about uh, modern hardware that are coming together with embedded devices. And finally, how can we solve the issues on those hardware and make them work with uh, generic applications? Uh, basically, when uh, video for Linux were developed, we were focused on the traditional hardware. Uh, those hardware have internal inside the chipset, loss of complexity. So the drivers and uh, the support for those hardware were simply activated by just one single uh, device node that worked pretty fine until we started with cell phones where part of the complexity were sent to the uh, kernel side, the kernel driver, and to use the space in order to set up the pipelines internally at the hardware. Uh, this is a basically a traditional uh, camera. It is not uh, very different from what you have in your notebooks. It is usually an USB camera. It could be internal inside the notebook or could be external. Uh, the thing is, I can control, fully control this kind of cameras with just one device node. Usually, uh, Dev Video Zero. Uh, with that device node, I have full access to the camera, to the streaming part, to the controls of bright uh, uh, gains, uh, white uh, balance and things like that. I can do everything from a single device node. Eventually, others could be exposed if the hardware, for example, has TV. It may actually expose other device nodes, but uh, in a general uh, rule is that just one device node is enough to control this kind of hardware. Uh, more, all generic applications assume this kind of model. Uh, so it is very easy for you to use it. Hardware. You just need to open whatever application, even your browser, and your camera is ready for you to use. We call this device node-based device. This is an example of a simple camera. This is a camera actually from an embedded hardware. This is a Chromebook Snow camera. It is internally an USB camera. Uh, basically, I don't sure if, uh, let me see. Uh, we basically have the camera, one processing unit inside the hardware, uh, another unit that do some control like uh, white balance and things like that, and everything is controlled via a video zero device node. Uh, the graph itself can be generated using the media controller, but it's very simple. Uh, applications can use it very, very easily. The second kind of hardware that started actually with the cameras from the Nokia's N9 and N900 uh, cell phones, uh, they assume that you can control each single part of the pipelines inside the hardware, so it exposes a lot of sub-devices and uh, I need first to get all those sub-devices, then I need an application that knows exactly how to set up in order to get the best resolutions, the best uh, quality of image. Without any speci uh, specialized applications, this hardware won't work. We call this uh, media controller-based devices. 
Uh, this is an example of an, uh, one of those hardware that's exactly the same chipset found on 900 uh, on Mark III ISP. All those yellow boxes are device nodes. An application should open all of those or most of those in order to access the hardware and control, and it has to be expectialized. In this specific case, we have 17 device nodes, so it is really complex for applications to work with this kind of hardware. Uh, when we start work with camera, very soon we realized that we had a trouble. The trouble on that time, I'm still talking about traditional cameras right now, uh, the trouble we had on that time is basically when we added one camera driver, GSPCA, we've detected that several different hardware vendors uh, that manufactures USB bridges for camera had their own proprietary formats. The reason for that is that on that time, uh, USB 1.1, the bandwidth of the USB bus were really small, so the camera hardware needed to compress images, and each vendor came with its own proprietary algorithm. So uh, if you had a generic application on that time, it would work only with the hardware that the specific developer of such application would happen, would to have. So it was really a nightmare. You have, if you want to use a webcam, you have to find a hardware that were already supported by your application, or you would need to write some code in order for that camera to work. So what we did on that time is that we wrote a library, libvid for Linux, and inside that library, we added support for all those proprietary formats. Then a single application could open whatever camera it was there. There were some glitches. Um, on some cases, vendors started to mount the sensors upside down. So if you use just the application, you'd see all the images inverted. So we had soon enough to had needed to add a list of quirks saying that this specific uh, USB ID has an upside down camera, so the library does the image uh, inversion for you. Uh, we, this way we uh, found a way of hiding from the applications the differences between different cameras. Uh, nowadays, most of the cameras are using a standard uh, USB uh, format, and the numbers of formats of possible formats are reduced, uh, so it's now a way more simpler than it used to be on that time. Oh. Not sure what happened here. I guess this didn't work well. Fine, just a second, please. So the goal of the library were just to add support for all those different uh, sorts of complexity. And uh, while we were doing those kind of things, we also got rid of a video for Linux version 1 API. It was in kernel since 1997, and we've just got rid of that, and we moved all those things inside the library in order to get rid of the kernel layer that didn't work fine, by the way. Okay, so libvid for Linux, it actually has three sets of libraries inside. The first one does image processing. The second one does the old API compatibility stuff. And finally, the last one uh, provides an abstraction for applications to be used uh, by the library. 
the image processing part uh, is it is what actually makes uh, all the image format conversions. Uh, from user space application, they only need to support, for example, uh, RGB 24 bits. And that's it. If the application supports that, it can work with whatever camera you have. There are a few other formats, for example, IUV, and not a few other formats that the application could use. It can select whatever it wants. And of course, the hardware exposes everything it supports. So if the application wants to do more or knows more about different formats, it can use directly, otherwise, the library will emulate for the, the application to work. So whatever application you have nowadays, they're using the library in order to get a, a set that would work for it. Uh, basically, the conversions it do, does are for the camera bridges uh, between different formats like RGB, IUV, Bayer, uh, MPEG, MJPEG, JPEG light, light things like that. Uh, there are some requests for adding support for MPEG. We don't have it any, yet. Uh, it also handles a specific format for uh, MPEG-based uh, hardware on connection chipsets. And every time it provides uh, an emulated uh, format, a flag is sent to the application. The application knows what format the hardware supports directly and what formats are emulated by the library. So if the application uh, have a format that is compatible with the hardware, it can use that format directly. Otherwise, it can use the emulated flag and let the library do his work. It may not be the best implementation, but it is there and the camera should work. That's the whole idea of this flag. Uh, inside the library, we also have things like gamma control, uh, out white balance, and auto gain. So if the, your uh, sensor, your camera doesn't have those features, the library will emulate it for you. And there is also a patch pending submission that would also provide autofocus. Um, and I said before, it also can support cameras that are mounted upside down and things like that. The whole idea here is that if the camera supports in hardware, for example, doing mirroring and things like that, it will use the hardware support. Otherwise, the library will emulate for you. Uh, the video for Linux One compatibility uh, libraries are just meant for being used on applications that were written before video for Linux Two. Uh, we, I, I, I was pretty sure that we had gone with those applications until I started looking on it, and I discovered that one of my favorite camera applications, Camorama, were still in use in those days the old uh, video for Linux One API. I actually got co-maintainership of that uh, application and already ported it to use video for Linux Two. I'm planning to use this application also when we start working with complex cameras. It is already available on Fedora. Other distros may or may not have this new version applied. I guess most still don't but it is just a matter of time. Uh, it was required during the conversion, and the way uh, this library works, it can work in two ways, actually. You could use uh, video for Linux one slash open, uh, close, and whatever, or we can set an LD preload. Oops, sorry, wrong button. There is an LD preload parameter that you can use on your, when you call your application asking the library to take control of open, close IO control and those, IO, and those uh, GCC, GLibC calls. 
it will uh, replace the standard glibc by its own implementation. That's one easy way for you to use applications like Skype and other closed source applications that don't support uh, the library directly. Uh, finally, the lib for uh, video for Linux 2 and video for Linux 2 convert encapsulates everything into a video for Linux 2 uh, set of functions. It uses the same concept as lib video for Linux 1. Basically, we have uh, video for Linux 2 underscore open, close, and map, and so on. If I call using video for Linux 2, uh, prefix, it will call the library. Uh, otherwise, I can also use LD preload to this and it will uh, emulate for you on Skype and other closed source applications. Internally, it calls libvirfallins convert. So all those features are available directly here when we are using those libraries. And you can have generic applications using this uh, in a way that applications don't actually need support all formats because, and don't, know, don't need to know if the hardware has a sensor invested or not because the library will do that for you. It was really easy to convert existing applications to use the library because the only thing you, you need to do where to seek for open, close, IO counter, et cetera, and replace by the, add a new prefix to those uh, IO controls, to those uh, controls, uh, adding the V, for Linux 2, underscore prefix, and that's it. Uh, what's the problem with that? The problem is that we had to stick exactly with the same video for Linux API as before. We couldn't add new things because otherwise uh, applications won't be recognized. So it was easy to implement, but it has some drawbacks. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, what are the main troubles with the approach we took? First of all, uh, it is, uh, there is a maintenance issue there. If we add new stuff at the video for Linux uh, API, we need to write patches to the library in order to add support for those new uh, system calls. Uh, second one, as we are doing emulation, software emulation, it has some issues on performance. The algorithms there are supposed to be fast, but they don't. Uh, use uh, a special assembler instructions. It doesn't use acceleration that some hardware could be providing. So it is not as the same as if you use, for example, the GPU for doing format conversions. It is slower than that. So depending on your needs, depend if you are running on embedded devices, this may consume more battery, this may uh, not be performing very well. So uh, it is a way for generic applications to work, but it has some side effects in terms of performance. And the, the pro most, the biggest problem right now is that it supports only traditional cameras. It was not meant to work with complex camera hardware. It was not designed for that. And that was okay until then, until now. Because uh, usually when you have an embedded hardware, mm -hmm. you have a different kind of needs and uh, maybe camera is not what you want on embedded hardware. You need something else. Uh, you, uh, you are doing, for example, uh, images on your cell phone, so you have maybe needing to use two different cameras at the same time, or maybe you are using a higher resolution when you click on a button. Uh, so it has different demands. So 
that was okay. But the thing is, uh, for vendors, uh, the model of complex camera are very, very interesting because they only need a sensor and everything else is inside the chipset that could be the same chipset as the CPU. So it is cheaper for a vendor to use a complex camera and move everything to software instead of uh, having a dedicated hardware for handling the camera itself and converting to a USB bus. So most, uh, all uh, SOC chipsets use this model and Intel itself is now using at, at this model for notebook chipsets. So there are still, there are a few models already using this key kind of cameras for notebooks. So we need a solution now because otherwise uh, generic applications won't work anymore. That say that I'm saying is that if you are wanting to use your browser to do a video conferencing with someone, you won't be able to do on Linux anymore if you have a newer hardware. So we need to fix this, and we need to fix it qui real quick. Uh, JStreamer also has some issues with libvid for Linux. Uh, the basic issue here is actually because the guy that were developing libvid for Linux, he had some other things to do, and he left the project. <coughs> and we don't have any active maintainer anymore for the library. And as we added things at libvid for Linux, at vid for Linux API, we started having trouble. I won't get into details; it doesn't really matter here, but. It's important to know that it has already some issues that we know and that should be fixed someday or we need to move to something else. As I said before, uh, several modern hardware are now based on uh, the compact camera approach. It started in 2008 with Nokia's cell phones. And nowadays, we have several newer hardware using this model. The first uh, issue started with Intel Atom ISP driver. It ended by being removed from the kernel. It, it was merged as a staging driver. Uh, nobody had time to modify it where on a really, really poor condition. It ended up being removed. And it was specific for Atom which is not really a big issue because you don't use the Atom outside of uh, embedded hardware. So we mostly don't use them in. But now uh, the new approach from Intel Mobile is using an uh, IP block called IPU3. Uh, we have already some top uh, of the edge Dell notebooks using these chipsets. If you have one of those hardware like Dell Latitude 5285, it, your camera won't work. You need to buy another external camera using USB because the one inside is complex camera and we don't have support for that. Neither at the kernel driver and nor on user space applications. We are working with Intel, Dell, and uh, Google in order to solve this problem. Uh, but basically what we want right now is a solution that works for all kinds of Linux-based system. A normal distribution on a notebook or desktop, Android, and Chrome OS. And that's the kind of things that we are now working to solve. Okay, we have a trouble we need to fix. How can we do that? Uh, we have a meeting in Japan on July uh, with several involved parties. Uh, it was at Google's uh, site. Google has interest in doing those kind of things. Uh, we had people from Intel, we had people from other companies, and uh, we've discussed it a lot. And the conclusion we've uh, arrived at is that we should have a newer library uh, 
stack. We are calling it lib camera. And the idea is that uh, the application will talk with the, this uh, library. The library internally will have uh, handlers, for example, to set up the pipelines inside the hardware. So when you select a resolution, it will find the best way to provide you that resolution on that frame rate uh, with that characteristics that you, your software needs. Uh, and if your camera has algorithms, uh, or needs some algorithms in order to make the quality of the image better, for example, improving the uh, focus or in adjusting the uh, white balance and things like that, it will call another part of the library for those 3A algorithms. That part is usually vendor specific. So this model uh, is meant to be open source using a generic open source license, but in this particular case, we believe that we will need to run some vendor specific stuff. That's what happens right now on embedded systems. And uh, the fact is that vendors don't usually open this kind of software. Yet, we are planning to do in a way that if someone else wants to write its own AAA code, it can do. So it will support both a vendor specific improvement software and open source software. That's the idea we are planning to do. And uh, we will have both the camera stack and those APIs documented in a way that you can replace any time. And applications won't need to know camera specific details. All of those will be inside the lab camera approach. The idea is to use the, what is there on Android HAL version 3 camera uh, API as a start. And uh, we will be changing it as needed in order to make it more generic and in a way that can be used not only with Intel hardware, but with all hardware that would have the, and the same requirements. We are, of course, starting with Intel because that's the thing that are right now in front of us and that is concerning us most because it will affect our notebooks. Uh, what's next? Uh, we will have another presentation. Uh, it will be tomorrow. Uh, Lohan will be presenting us uh, from ideas on board. He will be presenting us another stuff that are related with complex cameras and cameras in general. Uh, it will be tomorrow at 4.15 here. I'm not sure what room, but anyway, it is here at, sorry, this room? Okay, so it will be on this room. Uh, we will be launching tomorrow to a hot site called Lib Camera. It will have uh, a few things related with this project. And uh, we will be hosting the Git tree for that project on linuxtv.org. It will, should also be available tomorrow, the first, uh, the initial uh, commits of that, I suspect. And we will have a lot more discussions to happen on, on Tuesday on, at Linux Media Summit. So the idea is to get the community involved on a solution. Of course, the first commits will come from Intel and Google because they have the internal specs of this hardware, but the idea is to invite everyone to collaborate together in order to have a generic support for all kinds of cameras inside the, the library. That's it from my side. Any questions, any comments? Nobody?
Okay, thank you for your time.